Why do players on 2B2T dedicate so much time building bases, knowing they might one day be destroyed? Structures like Moon Megabase and Space Valkyria 3 took countless hours to create and were still a work in progress, yet all it took was someone finding it or an insider for everything to be destroyed. The answer to this question is complex, and to truly understand it, let's dive into the stories of two bases that met a similar fate. Our first story began sometime in 2021, when the players X-Ray SA and Harrison met on the Plus Plus Diagonal Highway. X-Ray SA was initially going to build a base on his own, but after talking with Harrison and figuring out they were both builders, it could not have gone more perfectly. They decided where to make their base using a biome finder, which would be a large spruce biome. On August 25th, 2021, X-Ray SA arrived at the location. He decided to convert 3D models to Minecraft, starting with a big stone fox, which gave it the name Foxfall. He invited more members, leading to more builds popping up around the place. Members like Bobbers22, Davey, and Tonepa were invited, and they provided materials to motivate the builders. Eventually, Bobbers22 discovered a stash created by Forsaken, filled with items from a chunk duplication glitch. Bobbers, unable to transport everything himself, asked for help relocating a portion of the stash. Harrison pitched in with the heavy lifting, while X-Ray SA loaded his his ender pearl for quick transport to the base. While moving the stash, Forsaken logged in and Harrison killed him with his own sword. Due to this heist, a large portion of materials were added to the base. Harrison got the itch to construct a massive volcano. X-Ray SA looked through countless 3D asset libraries, choosing the iconic Mount Vesuvius as its base layer. Together, they farmed countless stone blocks. Once the foundational layer was complete, they moved on to give it texture. Inside Harrison's volcano would be a vast, lush cave with a center water temple. Not long after Harrison built his volcano, X-Ray SA started on his spruce area. He was always a massive fan of the spruce block and would use it throughout the base. He was going to make a mansion inspired by Howl's Moving Castle. After months of planning in creative mode, the outer shell of the mansion was finished. The terrain underneath the whole area was built mainly by scaffolding grass and stone for hours and hours. He then built a little church and shortly after finishing that, a marketplace and a little village. With the help of Light Matica, he also built a TNT run arena. Harrison started another mega project, a great pyramid. After collecting a bunch of sandstone himself, he later reached out to the Spawn Mason's grants program to fund the project. Since many players appeared at Foxfall, X-Ray SA designed a pearl bridge. Eventually, the 1.19 update came to the server, and the pearls worked differently, so his original pearl bridge was obsolete. This is where a player named Yomo Boyo came into action to load pearls through redstone. Right next to the bridge would be a massive train. X-Ray SA originally made it for the players Tonepa and Davey. They were base hunters with a huge stash, but needed somewhere to store it. Tonepa contacted X-Ray SA about designing a stash, and he used the 3D model technique to bring the build to life. Some time later, while Tonepa was working on the train at his stash, a betrayal by a player whom he thought was a friend forced them to abandon the project. This turn of events gave X-Ray SA the chance to construct the train at Foxfall instead. This was accomplished with a printer hack that spanned blocks layer by layer. A skeleton of a blimp can be found inside one of the train wagons. Yomo Boyo originally designed this blimp with X-Ray SA. They made it for the Sky Mason's base, and the idea of rebuilding the blimp was to have it fixed at Foxfall for future battles. Yomo Boyo set up a new zone out of dark oak right next to X-Ray SA's spruce themed area. Intending to fight with the spruce area, Yomo Boyo dedicated countless hours to perfecting every build at the dark oak area. Together with Legend Bake, they became experts at moving mobs and building a version of Noah's Ark right within the base, even collecting two of every mob in the game. Shortly after Yomo Boyo finished his Dark Oak area, X-Ray SA decided to construct the final interior for the mansion. Having spent months designing it in creative mode, X-Ray SA focused on laying down blocks. Meanwhile, Yomo Boyo and Legend Bake meticulously placed all the mobs from the schematic into tiny caps 
capsules throughout the structure. This mansion took every bone in each builder's body to create, and when it was complete, they were happy with how far they got with it. Many players from different groups on the server called this place home, and there was still much progress. However, the days of Foxfall were numbered. While base hunting, a player named Farron navigated through various trails and nether portals. Sensing the potential of a base due to converging trails and portals, Farron remained determined. They rechecked their map upon reaching the 1 million ring road and spotted an area with one or two old chunks that hadn't been explored. Farron decided to follow this clue. This decision led them straight to X-Ray Essay's mansion and the rest of Foxfall. While exploring the structures at Foxfall, Farron stumbled upon the names of many spawn masons. This reminded them of a player named Killit, who had significantly helped their group. Killit had been involved in destroying Sky Masons, a base affiliated with the Spawn Masons. Feeling that Killit would relish the opportunity for another strike, Farron saw this as a perfect chance for their group to have fun. After inviting Killit to the base, Farron cleared out the stash, but suddenly, X-Ray SC's proxy account, Spruce Enjoyer, logged in. Realizing that the Foxfall members might now be aware of their presence, they thought it was only a matter of time before that would become a problem. Six members of the Generic Space Company journeyed millions of blocks across 24 hours. Exhausted from their long travel and the vast base size, they knew laying TNT would be time consuming. As they began setting up TNT around the mansion, X-Ray SC unexpectedly appeared within their rendered distance. The group quickly went after him for about five minutes. X-Ray SC eventually took a sharp turn towards his mansion and decided to self-grief, igniting the TNT not soon after, dying. The griefers had to split their destruction into two phases. They were low on TNT and were still exhausted from hours of travel. This unexpected delay gave Yomo Boyo a chance to log in and ignite a few of his builds on fire, as he had always wanted to do that. However, Farron showed up and begged him to stop, explaining they had planned to grief this part at 3pm MST. Yomo Boyo agreed, thinking it would be better for their griefing video. However, that's when an idea struck him. Since Farron told him exactly when they would start griefing, they could get a player named Kami, who was a PvPer, and use it to their advantage. When 3pm approached, the builder showed up and PvP'd the griefers for a couple of hours, killing Killit back to spawn twice. Foxfall is in ruins today, but Harrison and X-Ray Esse can't believe the base lasted that long. It brought many players and groups together, and there are plans to do even more extensive projects in the future. Our next story begins sometime in 2022. A player named King DD Dong met another player named Laziest Toast in chat while talking about an FPS shooter, Tarkov. They decided to start a base together since they were both builders and thought it could be fun. On March 15th, 2022, they found a spruce biome near a beach and created their first structures. Here, they made a fishing village. They expanded west into the bay and planned a harbor full of ships. Their next goal was to envelop this harbor with a vibrant, wealthy urban area, drawing inspiration from the colorful streets of Barcelona. Hence, they started referring to their town as Bloxalona. As Bloxalona's upper area began taking shape, Laziest Toast began to start on this solo project. Project Daedalus involved building a massive arch atop an artificial island with its own community. Inspired by this, King Didi Dong started on his solo project. After around a year and a half of developing his building style and learning how to do detailed interiors from Laziest Toast, he began work on what he hoped would become his signature creation for the base. This would be referred to as the Star Fort. After 2B2T was updated to 1.19, they invited players to visit the base. One of these players was XCC2, an old player. He spent hours exploring and said it was one of his favorite builds on the server. As months passed, an anonymous player who only went by the name The Dupes on Discord stole the base's stash. Despite their first reactions, the portion of their stash at the base was okay with only the PvP items missing and the guy who took it seemed pretty chill. 
but with their security compromised, paranoia set in. They were caught in a dilemma. They didn't want to hand someone fame for wrecking their base, yet they couldn't bring themselves to destroy it either. So they made a decision. They were going to take the base and push it somewhere else. Operation Bikini Bottom was no small feat. It involved deconstructing every structure in the base's central area. The interior and exterior of each structure had to be carefully mined block by block and packed into shulker boxes for reconstruction elsewhere. King Didi Dong dedicated countless hours to dismantling the buildings, and the progress was good. Yet, as time progressed, the combination of burnouts and real-life work began to slow the pace. Eventually, Operation Bikini Bottom ground to a complete halt. The materials ended up lying in chests, and shulkers became unsorted. It was a mess. Then, during a live Twitch stream, a player named Beardo Plays Games stumbled upon the base. He was friendly, but realizing their base had been exposed again was a wake-up call. They found the motivation needed for one final push to move the base somewhere else. Most of the structures were gone by March 18th, 2024. King Didi Dong would create a Reddit post and YouTube video, receiving admiration in the comments. The materials will be used for a more ambitious and planned out project, and they agreed to rebuild something from this base to keep its legacy going. Why do players on 2B2T build bases like Foxfall or Bloxalona if they will be found and destroyed? Many players focus on the building, planning, and moments with friends rather than fearing about its destruction. Jack the Ripper, an old player who created multiple versions of Space Valkyria, is more motivated by the desire to create than by any fear about his base being discovered. Although he'd rather keep his base a secret, showcasing his skills to build something he's proud of is his goal. For Foxfall, Harrison and X-Ray SA started the base because they had similar interests. As the base progressed, each member created areas with unique backstories to their structures, creating moments lived and memories made. The same goes for how a simple fishing village turned into a big, colorful city called Bloxalona. Harrison and X-Ray SA loved the thrill of having a massive base hidden in a world where it could be discovered at any moment. Building on 2B2T is about the journey, rather than creating something permanent. This has been true from the very start of the server. Iconic bases like the Valley of Wheat and NFE did not just serve as sanctuaries, they helped countless new players and sparked the formation of many groups. In some way, 2B2T imitates life itself because nothing lasts forever. Over time, all that's left of what people create will be stories and records, turning it into to a legend that's long gone. Even though nothing lasts forever, the experiences, impact, and connections we have with others while you're here matter. So live to the fullest.